Another function of the ventilator is to limit the size of a breath. This does not mean the end of the inspiration, but rather, how big a breath can get during inspiration. The limit variable is a setting which constrain or limit the parameters of a mechanical breath like pressure, flow and volume during the inspiratory phase. Limits are set to make sure all the other variables don't go out of control in the process of achieving the control variable. Control variables are parameters that the clinicians aim to achieve during the breath. For instance, during volume control ventilation, the clinician sets a tidal volume as a control variable. The ventilator will make sure that the patient receives the set tidal volume but doing so might also increase the pressure. Limit variable is set to make sure that the pressure is also kept in check. When the volume limit is met, the inspiratory flow ceases. Unlike the control variable or the cycling variable, multiple simultaneous limits can apply to the inspiratory phase. In other words, a limit variable is the maximum value a variable can attain during inspiration to prevent lung over distension, and it refers to the inspiratory phase only. That is not to say that those parameters are completely ignored during the other phases of ventilation. There are still limits in place but they fall into the territory of safety parameters or alarm limit settings. For this reason, limit variables are preferentially called target variables now. A target is what each breath cycle is aiming to achieve, that is, to deliver a breath to a preset tidal volume, preset pressure, or flow. The three main limit variables in routine use are pressure, flow and volume limits. Time, of course, cannot be a limit variable, because with a time-limited breath, the breath would have to end, and that would be cycling. The limit variable of a mode of ventilation can occasionally be discerned from the squaring or plateauing of the ventilator waveform for that variable. This plateau occurs when the limit is attained. In pressure-limited ventilation, the pressure waveform gets squared, and similar squaring happens in flow and volume-limited ventilation. It does not have to be square however, as there is no rule that says the limit has to stay the same for the whole of inspiration. If it suits you, the limit can change mid-breath, and some adaptive modes of ventilation make on-the-fly adjustments to the inspiratory limits. In a pressure-limited breath, the ventilator will allow pressure to rise during inspiration up to a certain value set by the clinician. When the set pressure is attained, any excess pressure entering the patient circuit will be released through a pressure release valve. The breath simply doesn't cycle into expiration when the limit is reached, rather the limit pressure is maintained in the lungs. Pressure control and pressure support ventilation uses pressure limiting to limit the breath. A breath is flow limited when the gas flow into the ventilator circuit reaches the predetermined set level before the end of the inspiration. Setting the flow limit requires practice with patient assessment and knowledge of physiological demands as has implications for patient comfort. For instance, if the flow limit is set to 40 liters per minute, the ventilator will not produce a higher flow rate even if the patient makes a strong respiratory effort. This could result in decreased patient comfort and patient ventilator desynchrony as the patient's inspiratory flow demand is not met. If the flow rate is high, the peak airway pressure increases and can cause barotrauma. For reference, the typical peak inspiratory flow rate of a calmly breathing person is 30 liters per minute, and it can increase to over 200 liters per minute in an athletic individual performing heavy exercise. Modern ventilators have a theoretical maximum flow limit of about 200 liters per minute. Typical inspiratory flow limit is set at about 60 to 120 liters per minute. Flow limit is used by volume control ventilation. 
A volume-limited breath is delivered by the ventilator by measuring the flow of air delivered during a specific time period. This volume will be the maximum amount of gas that will be delivered to the patient during an inspiration. When the volume limit is reached, the inspiratory flow ceases with the closure of the inspiratory valve, but the expiratory phase does not begin. If the mode is time-cycled, the patient will hold their breath until the prescribed time elapses, in effect, there is a short inspiratory pause. The volume limit ensures that there is no overdistension and lung trauma, and helps maintain tight control over minute ventilation and partial pressure of carbon dioxide in arterial blood. Volume limits are employed in volume control ventilation where we find squaring of volume time waveform.